in the company of butterflies. I know a place where swarms of symmetry, hordes of hues, where scattered blue-banded ones, spotted black ones too, flutter, glide, zigzag, come full circle among the fields and valleys below extinct volcanoes and the lomot and omot of limestone jungles. Among the reclusive goats atop jagged cliffs overlooking the Pacific and among the marigolds and marian grottos of manicured gardens. I knew a young girl who would catch the butterflies along the narrow turned widening roads of this place who would gingerly place them in glass jars lined with branches and leaves and the smell of pickles. And then there was this old woman with skin like afuk and a face like gualafun. Her sweet and sour treats beckoned kids to come scampering about like the Ponglao, like the Yadzuzu. This woman, Auntie Nena, owned a small store and was famous for her candy and huge pickles. During its heyday, Nenat's store catered to the immediate post-war construction of a paved road along its storefront. This store, the only one of its kind for miles, was damaged during Typhoon Karen in 1962, and yet despite this, Auntie Nenat continued to give generously like the Tano of this place. She still managed to make her magic work on Halloween nights, when she transformed the back road into an ocean of candy. It was Auntie Nena who gave me the butterfly jars through which I stared at diaphanous wings for hours until a familiar voice reminded me it was time to feed the chickens. I outgrew the desire to catch the butterflies, but never the urge and urgency to delight in their flights of fancy. I came to realize other things about the butterflies, other things about this place. Like the time my exploring Guam class took a field trip to experience the flora and fauna around Marble Cave. After the field trip, where I'd seen hundreds of butterflies, I returned home and was surprised to learn that my grandmother had knowledge of the scientific terminology. Hungan? Utungusi flora? San Diego, Lo, Odzia Desi Fauna. I explained to her that, like the Benadu and the Halitai, the Ababang was part of this place. She smiled and chuckled. This would not be the first or last time I would see hundreds of them on any given day along this place. But like other defining moments, the eighth grade field trip marked new forms of consciousness around a sense of place and belonging. I would come to associate the butterflies with the hale, the halom, and salen of this place, with the relations, old and new, and the physical and emotional landscapes of this place. I would come to connect the mohon and landmarks of this place, natural and man-made, with life-changing events and the ubiquity and omnipresence of the butterflies in their various forms. I remember one day the butterflies were out in full force during Nana's return to Guahan after 20 years. We took her to a familiar beach and while others frolicked in the ocean, enticed little crab legs to come out of their shells. I was intent on following Nana's every move. I knew very little about my maternal great-grandmother. She moved from this place to California. That morning, as she contemplated the water's edge of this place, I imagined her slipping back and forth between episodes of the Grunion Run and the Manyahuk Run, between Long Beach and a longed-for beach of this place. No sooner had I been lost in thought 
Then I turned and saw Nana lunge into the waves. I remember vividly the day Nana, small and fragile, took a dip in the warm, caressing waters of Hanum. This was the last time I saw Nana before her passing, with a glaze turned spark in her eyes, with her long gossamer gown floating toward the surface, waist-length strands of gray mingling with the seaweed, with her childlike giggles. I will never forget that day when Nana did snow angels in the water and danced with the agility of butterflies hovering above her in the salt air, hovering in the nearby Alalaktasi. In dreams of Nana's return to this place, she would reveal histories and secrets that up until then lay in obscurity in the deep crevices and caves of this place. In my return to this place, I continue to see the butterflies amidst diminishing landscapes. Even when I don't see them, I sense that they are here, there, fluttering during the day in chicken fields that have long since been emptied of those who tended to them. That they are here, there, in reticence, on nights as I drive past the place where the Manamko say, the Atsu should not have been blasted for luxury condos along pristine beaches because, as they explained, the butterflies were also here, there, in my stomach, when I shared with a kindred spirit my angst about leaving this place for just a while even. Referring to historical accounts of her Bonobon women ancestors tying their individual strands of hair to the thoraxes of butterflies to create a surreal halo effect, she told me, Get those butterflies out of your stomach, girl, and into your hair. In other islands across oceans, some people say butterflies are the souls of women returning home. I remember this when I can't physically be here, there, in this place I call home. When I close my eyes and open them to the smell of pickles and the image of an old man in a straw hat with his bucket of chicken feed asking, Get in manu hao hago? I remember this when I answer. In the company of butterflies, Tata. In the company of butterflies. <laughs>